Hello everyone, this is China Paradigm, where we, Dashi Consulting, interview seasoned entrepreneurs in China. Hi everyone, I'm Matthew David, the founder of Dashi Consulting Think, and this podcast, China Paradigm. And today I'm with someone I tried to interview for a long time, and finally I interview him, is Eloi Gérard, from co-founder of CrossNest. I expect from this interview to understand more about an industry we talk a lot about, but still a little is happening in our daily life and things may change because in the coming years, 5G is going to appear more broadly, uh, being more mainstream and also because people find maybe models and there is a case study that Edward worked on and for the first time I saw actual results like reach like conversion with VR, AR, XR, we are going to define all those, those uh, words. This could be become a, a, a big industry. This could become the next uh, revolution, maybe like the internet, to change our daily life, to change the way we shop and so on. Thanks for being with us, Eloa. And um, what is uh, the, the size of your business, number of cases you have worked on? Uh, what, uh, what do you do exactly? Uh, okay, thank you, Mathieu, first of all, for, for welcoming me in your, in your uh, podcast. Uh, it's a pleasure, even if we are actually not living very far from each other. Uh, we are in Shanghai, but uh, it's, it's super cool to be here. Thank you. So, thank you so much for that. Um, what, do, what do I do? Um, okay, I created a company uh, called Crow's Nest four years ago, uh, dedicated to AR and VR. And uh, we, uh, my background is more into content and creating content for uh, the film industry. I used to be a film producer in Belgium. Uh, and then in China for many years, I'm here for eight years now, uh, I used to work many years into the, the, the marketing content. So doing content for even, doing content for uh, TV commercials, doing content for multiple type of uh, things uh, used in, uh, in marketing. And uh, I... Uh, created the, the company uh, to, to dedicate our, our attention to AR and VR and the content in AR and VR. So we are uh, more a studio uh, and an agency where we really help uh, brands to, um, to create uh, experience in, uh, in VR and AR. Um, maybe the, the cool things to know The, the cool thing, first, the cool things to know about crow's nest, because many people ask us, well, crow's nest, why crow's nest? What does it mean? And, uh, you know, the crow's nest is the, it's in English, the, on a, on a boat, you have the mast of the boat, and then on top of the mast, you have this little platform called the crow's nest, where the sailor, you know, is using his glasses to look around and to see in 360 degree. Hence the name and VR where you look in 360 degree. So this is why we, we uh, decided to do that. Um, okay, so some case study, maybe just to, so in four years, we had the chance to, to work for uh, multiple type of clients in very different uh, area. But uh, we started, uh, our first client was a French client, uh, Peugeot Citroën, uh, asking us to help to promote innovation inside, uh, inside uh, Peugeot Citroën. Very wide, things you know what does it mean innovation of course it's the first case studies that you do for a very cheap price to try to uh to 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 create some traction out of your the service that you do and uh, it was actually super cool and we did uh, our first 360 degree video the first and not the last because we are still doing that uh to uh show uh to interview people within within uh, Peugeot Citroën in uh, in 360 degree and to show what are the the the, the place you, you know you, you there is a research and development center different different things how to visualize this type of things within within Peugeot Citroën and how Uh, how does it look like and to attract actually talents and developer to connect with uh, Peugeot Citroën and to come to, to work with them uh, and to bring more application and, and, and more things. So this was the idea. We had uh, after that, you interrupt me, you, you ask any question, of course. Uh, after that, we had uh, several cases in travels and we still have a lot of cases in travels uh, because VR is super appropriate in uh, visualizing 
uh, the space. Uh, so uh, a, a, a travel is actually the background of uh, an experience. You know, when you go to visit Thailand, uh, you uh, if you want to visit to to visualize how could it look like to to go in a hotel in in Thailand and then to see how does it look like to visit temples, how does it look like the beach, you know, all these kind of things. Uh, VR is a super appropriate way to visualize that because you have a 360 degree view of uh, that, uh, which creates a, a kind of new um, trust relationship between the user, the consumer and the brand. Because when you are looking at a hotel, uh, from inside a hotel, you would uh, really see how it looks like. So you would understand without the default of the thing also. So there is like a new a new brand promise out there. Uh, so uh, do, you, you will see, ah, okay, uh, here in this image, because I can see all around when I'm on the beach, I can actually see that there is a factory out very far there. And it's acceptable because it's far. When you are in, uh, when you are booking your your trip on Expedia uh, or on Sea Trip in China, uh, you would see a few pictures. But of course, the pictures would not really tell the reality because this is the job of the hotel or the uh, to 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 try to sell you something. So they will really try to to show you. Uh, how <laughs> the, the best part of it and you, you 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 do not really trust anymore the photo of the thing because you're like, of course it's the best photo that you can take and then you arrive and you're like, oh there is actually a factory there so i, I cannot uh, visualize the whole thing so vr changed this relationship yeah let me pose a bit of, yes. on, on the case studies and especially the tourist ones um mm. we understand that actually most people who are think talked about vr and ar uh are, are thinking that it can enhance uh, the vision you have of somewhere you want to go to, but currently, if I if I want to 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 do that, both on the hotel that the side or or the the, the consumer side, where should I go? What should I use? Uh, is it something we are? What, what are we talking about? Are we talking about something existing or something which is still experimental? Yeah. So you have numerous channels, for example, on YouTube VR. Yes, it exists. You have YouTube in VR uh, that you use in a VR headset. So you have many influencers uh, using VR, using a 360 degree camera to tell their stories and their travel stories uh, around the world to show how it looks like. You do not have only uh, YouTube, you, you also have uh, Facebook VR. You know, Facebook is one of the main investors in, in the VR field because they have Oculus. Uh, so you have Facebook VR, you, have, you know, you can upload a video in 360 degree. Yeah. You have in China a dedicated platform, yeah. To interrupt one minute, uh, I, I'm on YouTube. Um, I mean, I typed YouTube VR. Is it a channel or is it a platform calling called YouTube VR? Same for Facebook. Is it a channel? Is it like a, a tool to upload, or you have a platform where you only have uh, VR? Yes, it is not something you can really visualize from your computer. You need to have uh, a, an Oculus. Uh, I do not have one just next to me, uh, but uh, you need to have uh, one of the leading uh, VR headset and inside of it, you have an app store, you know, like uh, the Apple uh, app store or like the Android store, you know, like the Google Play store and you can download Google, you can go uh, download a YouTube VR and from there you will start watching content like you are watching YouTube on your phone, you know, so it's an app that you can download. Got yeah. it. So the VR, we have all experimented with a headset and putting your phone in the headset is not really what you are talking about. This is the thing which could become popular because everyone has a smartphone, but very few people have Oculus. So going back to my to my questions, is you 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 can set up and create this 3D environment, this VR environment, um, uh, or, or, or this this, this um, uh, pictures even uh, 360. But if you don't have the headset. Where, where the market is currently, again, are we talking about something experimental? It is actually very interesting to see the experiment. And I know that you worked, for instance, on events in shopping malls or events or uh, uh, devices in shopping malls. So it's kind of entertainment. Are we still talking about entertainment or we are now talking about mainstream? So uh, what what mainstream means, we, we, we don't really know. Okay, just to give you some numbers. So the, at the beginning, yes, we had this little cardboard box and you put your phone in the cardboard box to, to visualize the VR content. This is uh, 
not existing anymore. We don't do that. Uh, uh, barely the quality of that was very rudimentary. It was great to introduce people to what VR is, but now we use proper VR headset. You have two types of headset, those who are connected to your computers, uh, where you need a powerful PC to visualize uh, co complex uh, content like games, or you have standalone uh, VR headset, uh, like the Oculus Quest, which is now the most popular by far uh, VR headset. And um, what was the question? Is it to, so? To, are we? Are we? Uh, what are we talking about? Are we talking about mainly entertainment? Because Oculus, yes. you may find in a shopping mall or in an event, whatever. Or so, are we talking about mass market? Okay. So the, what is the mass market? Is that we have like ten million, uh, between ten to twenty million VR headsets being sold every year. All, all uh, combined, right? All combined. All combined worldwide. worldwide. So uh, we don't know exactly how, but I would say this is the, the estimates that we, we... So you have, for example, uh, around four to five million uh, Sony PlayStation VR uh, being sold worldwide, So which is the number of users, you know, probably less than that, but all combined users with Oculus, with HTC, with Windows Mixed Reality, we can estimate that, yes, it's between 10 to 20 being sold every year. So we can estimate that we have few, uh, uh, maybe 40 to 60 million users, you know, monthly active users worldwide. We don't really know. We don't have the, that type of data. Is it mainstream? It is not mainstream. I mean, it looks big, you know, like, oh, it's millions of, uh, but compared to the, the phone market, it's ridiculously small, okay? Yeah. But, but it, it is, is not the purpose. Uh, VR is not a technology uh, th that is made or that will become something that everybody will have. It is dedicated for specific use case and for a specific audience. First one being the gamers, okay? So game uh, gaming people, they uh, have already powerful computers and uh, so they are uh, very happy to to buy a, a headset and to connect it to that and to enjoy many different type of uh, new games it's a very uh, large community uh, is it large we don't know if you know about gaming um, for example the platform the platform steam which is the main uh, gaming platform uh, calculated that every month they, they, they provide statistics about uh, VR on their platform and they have one person of the people using Steam in VR. But Steam is gigantic, okay, so one person is already big, but it's only one person. So this is a bit the game, the, 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 the game people. Then, then you, you have, have um, next, next to the, the game, game, I would say, uh, where more where we are, which is like the narrative experience which is people uh, who are uh, using VR to watch film, to watch content uh, in 360 degree or to experience very new type of artistic experience and new type of storytelling. This is very uh, driven right now by uh, the festival. The film festival in the world have now their little section of VR. So like Sundance, like uh, like the Venice Film Festival, like Tribeca in New York, if you know a bit the, the world. Uh, like in China, we have the a festival in Qingdao called the, the Sandbox Immersive uh, Film Festival, which is like super popular, super important for us uh, here in Asia. And where uh, all creators come and uh, and see the selected work, uh, uh, and where we try to redefine the concept of what is a story, you know. So it's a, a new type of experience, which is not a film, which is not a game, uh, where uh, we uh, try to uh, provide emotion driven by a uh, narrative, by a story, to a user in a, in a very different type of things. This is quite confidential, but this is quite important for the industry. So you. You have to go in festivals. Some of them can be downloaded um, into uh, the Oculus Store or into Steam from Steam. But uh, this is where we are actually. It's the the research and development department of the of the entire VR industry. This is where we're like, okay, what does it mean? What is the language? What can we develop? Then aside, aside of that, you have a huge application in education. So many startups are working in the education fields to try to uh, really think about how can we learn something by using VR and AR. You know, how can we visualize uh, object on in science? How can we learn about space? 
planets, the, the, the human body, you know, all these things that are, can be visualized in 3D. And it's, uh, it was not possible before. And now you can really imagine that type of things. So many startups and many, uh, many big education companies are investing it in that field to try to understand that. But still beginning because uh, we, we need to have a, a, an entire ecosystem of schools yeah. having a VR headset and, and, and content provider. Yeah. So you have, uh, yeah. You mentioned specifically in your in your presentation a case study for Thomas Cook. For people listening to us, uh, we are in uh, November 2019. People may may wonder why we talk about Thomas Cook. But Thomas Cook is still active in China. Uh, actually, his brand was just bought a few weeks ago by Fosun's investment fund, uh, which invested before uh, Thomas Cook. But you have worked on, on Thomas Cook China. Uh, and in your case study, that's something I really wanted to talk about. You mm -hmm. come up with numbers about results, 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 which mm -hmm. is a word yes. I, I rarely see when we talk about VIR and or, or, or XR. Um, and we may define more what XR is later on. Uh, but you say that Chinese-based platform got something like a certain number. Then Western-based platform got a number and total like uh, 50,000 people. and times two in terms of sales and booking. But then my question is, if so many, so few people have the equipment, if uh, actually it's so selective, what are we talking about here? Could you explain more? Because there is, it seems that there's a, a, a gap between those results, which seems good, like with engagement, with number of views, and the fact that very few people ca can use it. What was this campaign, for instance? Yeah. So uh, for Thomas Cook, uh, it's a great example where we created uh, travel contents and then uh, we uh, pushed this content into uh, existing, so, so to on, on two platforms like uh, YouTube VR, but in China you have Youku VR, you know, uh, YouTube, Youku being the equivalent of YouTube for China. You have VR, uh, you have different uh, type of uh, of platform uh, less known and we uh, basically uploaded that and we and we um, we asked uh, the the platform to uh, to push our contents uh, to their existing user in china uh, and uh, the idea is that from um, uh, while the, the users are watching this content, they can be redirected, you know, they are on their computer, so they are watching the things and they, they can be redirected and, and play the, uh, and, and, um, click on the IPL link and follow the, the uh, next step in, the, in their journey from, from watching the content to actually book on the website of Thomas Cook. So they could calculate that there is a tracking. It was not uh, actually our only experience where they could calculate that there is, there is, a, there is, a, there is a, a follow up from the, from the content in VR to the website so that there is a clear link between watching the content to actually buy this travel that they just watch. Okay, to make sure that people understand when, when, what, what we're talking about, uh, the people you're talking about, they were using a head, handset, a headset which mm -hmm. is specific for mm -hmm. VR or they were using their phone? Both. So okay. both, uh, yeah, both. You could you could watch a, a three sixty degree content from your phone, and then you can uh, swap and to visualize what it is. And uh, we imagine that many uh, did it this way. Okay, uh, m many could watch it in Google Cardboard. Many could uh, could watch it in a, in a VR headset. We don't have exactly how how many. We just know that the content itself uh, went to the to to drive the this. I see. So, yeah. It's, it's part of a, a wider campaign. So it's also, you know, it, you don't know if you can attribute that to social media or to, you know, there are different components of that. It's just the result of that. And we were the main content of uh, this campaign is uh, increase in sales. Yeah. We had uh, the same impact for a campaign that we did for Logitech, you know, and also something similar uh, uh, after a VR content, content uh, the, the, the sales, sales increased uh, uh, by two. So we, we, we know that, yes. Yeah, so I understand for Thomas Cook, for me, it's pretty clear. You are offering a 3D experience emerge into, into uh, the place for people who want to go uh, for a trip in a specific place. So they, they emerge better, they see better, they, they, they are more convinced the place is the right one and they, they convert. Could be on a phone, it's good enough to have a better experience, a better understanding than a, pic a simple picture. Uh, even you don't have an Oculus or uh, um, HTC, right, uh, uh, and set. Then, you have also worked for Logitech. Uh, would you mind us uh, t telling us what you did for them? Because it seems less intuitive for me uh, than travel. Travel seems to be like 
um, a, a, a very um, uh, obvious uh, cho choice mm. for VR. But what about Logitech? Okay, so Logitech, uh, they are working a lot. They do uh, accessories for gamers. And uh, you can imagine that gamers is a community very interested in, in uh, VR. So uh, what they do is a, a steering wheel, you know, where you can play video games with their steering wheels to, to, to play car video game, like GTA or, like, you know, like many of these uh, type of games. And it's an accessory. It's a quite big, you know, you have to plug it to your, to your desk or you have a full machine where you have the paddles and you have a, a gear to actually have a feeling that you drive a, a car. And they, 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 they build that and they sell that. They are leader into, into their, their market uh, about this type of accessory for gamer, which is super cool. Huh? It's a super cool accessory. You feel that you are driving a car. And uh, they wanted to, to be like, oh, okay, how can we promote our, our, uh, our new version of this product in a, in a nicer way, uh, in, a, in a new way. And um, so uh, they, they had this idea uh, to try to reach the existing uh, gaming community uh, in VR and uh, to promote this, this uh, accessory to the, to the, the gaming community. Uh, which is there is a perfect match out there, you know. It, it makes sense uh, because uh, gamers who wants to 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 buy this type of things are probably also those who have a VR headset. So what we did is that it's a 360 degree video uh, where uh, we uh, shot the actual uh, partner of Logitech. How do we call it? The celebrities from from Japan, uh, who is uh, a super cool, famous uh, driver, race driver, and is the guy who basically inventing the drift so drifting for for a car is doing you know this movement where you break and you so this is the guy who invented that super cool guy super funny and uh, so we went to tokyo to shoot with him uh, on the circuits uh, him explaining to a user a to, to to a consumer of logitech how to do super cool things with your car and how to drift you know and how to use actually the steering wheel of logitech so we we mix a little bit both the experience of being on the circuit and him explaining really on the on the on the on the gaming gear how, how does it work so here in this case it's just it's a super cool content because it's a celebrity super fun that for a specific community they wow this is cool to see this guy in VR into a quite um, uh, the content is quite uh, how to call it uh, quite cool because it's it's a circuit so you are with him in the car you know it's noisy it's like well, uh, it's quite fast, you know. It's like a, it's not like a, a travel experience of Thomas Cook. We are into something that would uh, be more more appealing for gamers, and it is a, a pure brand content at the end. You know, it's it's a, it's a, let's de let's develop. A, yes, it's inspiring. It's a brand story. It's a, it's a peripheral content for the main thing, you know. But it's a super cool content. It's content that people really want to watch. It's not like a TV commercial, you know. This is a celebrity uh, giving tips on how to drive in video games. No. So it's, 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 it's not directly selling the product, it's more soft advertising, and this is why people really love it. You know? And they watch it, and they watch it in VR, and then after, yes, they are redirected uh, to, to, to buy the, the gears that, uh, that he's talking about. Okay, and again, again, uh, the sales are increased for, for this campaign. I think it was the, the main, the main content of the campaign it was a global campaign. And it was, the content is even in Japanese. So can you imagine how difficult it is to reach a, a wide audience? Where, uh, but it, we translated it to the subtitle in, in English, of course. And I think in Chinese and a few other languages, I don't remember. Uh, but, uh, but, but yeah, people, because it's a super famous guy and, uh, and it's, it's in VR, it's cool. They are, the, the content is more, there is way more engagement with this type of content. So it's always about thinking about a, a great, a great concept reaching the really the audience that you want to reach. You know, and it's not like oh, uh, we we had many VR cases where it's it's like it doesn't make sense. You know, you you, you want to do something but it doesn't reach a, a specific audience. If you want to reach a, a generation Z, a little bit gamer, VR is just super cool. You know the. It, it, you will look totally different and you will, or you will uh, engage very differently with your community. Let's talk about definition. Um, I, I, I think that most people understand what VR, AR is, but two of the words you are using, which are XR and AV, I, I'm, I'm myself not very, uh, very clear on, on what it is. 
let, I, I will try to define the first two ones, um, and you tell me if I'm right. Uh, VR being a totally new environment, totally virtual. You, 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 you have uh, on your eyes something which does not e exist in front of you, not in the space where you are. AR is implementing through uh, the lenses of a headset some items with a virtual in the place where you are. So to give an example, you are uh, in your home and you could actually picture uh, um, a new um, a new furniture, like an IKEA furniture or an Amazon furniture. I know you work with Amazon, right? Um, and uh, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you have a case actually where you, you put a furniture in a, in a, in, in a, in a place, in, in a space. And, and VR would be that actually I am in an other apartment somewhere else in the world and I see the furniture. Um, that would be a difference. But what about XR and AV? And correct me if you think my definition is not proper. No, you are totally right. You got it very well. Uh, so uh, the, the, the fact is that the more we were evolving and the industry being built, you know, we, we noticed that there, are, there could be different things between AR and VR. So um, when we at the beginning consider that AR would be just like something like Google Glass, where you have an overlay of information coming up to you, uh, the industry then progressively, because the, the processing power uh, of the, the, the micro microprocessor became better and better, we could start tracking the thing, we could start position objects into the real space. And this become the new definition of AR, where we're like, oh, okay, we, we have uh, transparent glasses, and we can see an object being positioned on the table, you know, or an animation, or uh, yeah, a CG animation, um, to, to 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 give you new things. So to give you a game. So CG is computer generated imagery. So at, okay, the, the 3D objects, and, uh, something made by a computer. So something that you see all the time. Something like the a car on a on a poster of a, an advertising for a car is actually not a real car. It's a computer generated car that to, to, to that we use to visualize the car on the poster which is very common that is used by architects to to create buildings um, so we position that so between the AR field where we we just you see the real world and you see some of uh, artificial elements and the VR where you see where everything is made by computer or is shot and you are in, surrounded by uh, the uh, entirely by an artificial world you you have in between where we could be like oh okay we invented concept like augmented virtuality like av you know which means that oh we could replace existing objects and mask them with other things so okay like for, like for gamers uh, in the, in AR we like the idea that you are at your place and you see a sofa and the sofa is transformed in a castle. This is augmented virtuality. So there are multiple uh, multiple um, stage between AR and VR where you are like, okay, you could see around you and a wall could become something different. And 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 it's not like just a simple object. It's like the more the, the, the world is transformed into, into a full VR world. I see. Okay. So uh, what we say AV is uh, augmented because you add a layer of virtuality on something existing on a product. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, and, and the AR uh, is more like you add a, a virtual element into a space which is real. Yes, exactly. But then And then uh, uh, we start calling a mixed reality, MR, everything which is <laughs> doing everything. So like uh, if a glass is uh, like the Oculus Quest, the new one, uh, or like uh, the new uh, few, few uh, HTC uh, now device, uh, it's uh, uh, you have a screen, you know, but you have cameras that are uh, actually shooting the real world. So from inside, you can see the real world and this real world can be entirely replaced by a virtual world. And these glasses could be considered like uh, mixed reality glasses because you can have from the same headset, you can have an AR experience and you can have a full VR experience and everything in between. So this is what we uh, called a mixed reality. Uh, this is why uh, uh, Microsoft called themselves uh, Microsoft uh, Windows Mixed Reality to define their headset and the software, which is Windows uh, uh, being the operating system of their uh, mixed reality uh, uh, headset. Okay, and then you have 
Sorry, it's a bit complex because mixed reality didn't qualify. Uh, mixed reality, you would talk about mixed reality when you talk about a headset that can do all of these things. But uh, if you want to talk about the industry, like uh, someone is doing, uh, if you put uh, a company, a startup doing AR and a startup doing VR, you would say, uh, you guys are doing the same thing. You are uh, working in the you, you you do AR and you, you do VR, but you you, are, you you do the same thing, no? You do, you, intuitively, this is like uh, because you are in spatial computing, because you you actually you are building worlds where you are you are organizing information in the space. This is what you do. How can we qualify this entire industry, this entire world? And this is where we came up with the idea to call that XR, which can mean extended reality or which can mean cross reality. So XR qualify, qualify the entire, you know, the, all, all the industry and say, okay, you are working in XR. So we like to qualify ourselves and say, okay, we are CruiseNest XR because we can help you for your AR need or your VR need. Uh, so is it XR, XR? Is it a word that it is created in the industry or is it created by you? Oh, no, 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 I don't create words. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, it, uh, it's created by the industry. It emerged okay. like three, three years ago where we, uh, it's created by us where, because we start using it and then, then it becomes a real thing. But it's, <laughs> I didn't I see, it. I see. I, no. I wasn't sure if yeah. it was a company word you were using yeah. internally or it was yeah. an industrial word. Uh, okay, got it. Uh, got it for the wording. We talk about China and China paradigm. And you talk about Oculus, which is made by Facebook. Uh, you talk about uh, YouTube VR. You also talk about Yuku VR. But um, how does it interconnect between China and the West? Do we have the same issues of uh, Facebook being forbidden, some uh, headset being forbidden? We know, for instance, PlayStation um, or Xbox was forbidden for many time in China uh, as a console game. It was a uh, game console, sorry. It was uh, authorized, I think, let's say three, five years ago only. So what are the limitations you see in China compared to the West? Yes. So yes, we have all these problems that you are talking about. So the, the, the main, um, main leader in, uh, in, in our fields are Sony, yes, and PlayStation VR. So PlayStation VR being now in, uh, in China and uh, in the rest of the world, they can really leverage the gigantic network. And when they, when they publish a game on this platform, it can reach uh, China as well as the rest of the world. But uh, for the second largest one, which is uh, Oculus, uh, Oculus cannot officially enter the Chinese market uh, and is blocked. Uh, so you need to use the VPN to actually uh, y use that in China. But it's so compelling that many people are using Oculus with a VPN in China. You can buy an Oculus uh, Quest uh, on Taobao, on Tmall, uh, on GD, everywhere. You have a distributor of, the, uh, of those. But it creates a huge distortion of the thing. It's not so. So you can imagine that for developers in uh, in uh, in XR within China. They have difficulties themselves to visualize. Okay, what's happening in the in the West? Uh, you have YouTube VR. You have also a headset being made by Google uh, called Google Daydream. This doesn't really work, of course. Here, it's too slow. You need VPN. It's like it, it creates a huge friction uh, of that. So, the the ecosystem of China is a bit. Uh, uh, separated by the, the rest of the world is less aware of what's happening uh, there um, and it doesn't really help to uh, make this the, the industry emerging uh, out of China so you have that but you have multiple factors that uh, make the, the industry very different uh, you have also the fact that the porn industry is a major uh, uh, major type of content in the US and in the rest of the world, okay, because it's an existing industry in uh, there in Japan or you can imagine. So you have many studios doing porn content in VR and that are selling it on their own market, which is outside of China. And this drive, I guess, a lot of users who wants to try VR for the first time, you know, and this is, they are between friends and say, ah, oh, ha, 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 let's try this funny thing. And uh, this is, you know, a, a perfect Christmas gift, uh, quite funny, you know, that you are in, and then you try, uh, the, the, you have your first experience, it's upon VR. And then from there, oh, you download other games and you download other things. In China, we don't have that. But in China, we don't have also, um, 
uh, enough uh, schools of design uh, to study multimedia, to study uh, film, to study storytelling, and to combine uh, uh, actually three different uh, skill sets, uh, which are being creative, being good in technology, and being good in business. And this type of thing, you know, it's like where you have to be pretty holistic about uh, your understanding of uh, a problematic like VR. Uh, schools do not really uh, f uh, train people to, to understand these three things in the same times in China. So we have a lack of uh, skill set and a lack of entrepreneur who uh, try to, uh, who, who could build platform, who could build content. So we barely have any studios in China. Uh, the, the number of good content is extremely small compared to the US or compared to Europe. So there are multiple factors that made that uh, AR and VR act in China, even if it should become, it should be even now the largest uh, market in the world, is actually a very tiny market. It's like, it could be something, but we have so much uh, hurdles uh, uh, that, that, that the thing doesn't uh, always work. And this makes a, a great place for foreigners to actually, to actually do, do content here because there are less, less content uh, in China. You talked about um, the, some of the hardware uh, being Oculus and Sony. Uh, you are talking about the, so the presentation about Magic Leap and uh, smart glasses. Uh, would you mind telling us more about something which is a bit more easy to wear, easy to buy than an Oculus and Sony? And I think when we talk about smart glasses, uh, we talk about something we can wear in an event and which is not... Uh, entirely emerging, uh, but actually uh, uh, um, adding a layer of virtuality uh, on your on your lenses. Would you mind sharing a bit more about the the, the set of hardware we can we, we can we can we can use? So. Uh uh, AR glasses uh, at the beginning, like three years ago, the first big one maybe could be could be considered as being uh, HoloLens, Microsoft HoloLens, which is like big glasses at which position objects in the space, you know. Um, but the field of view is super tiny. The quality is not great, but it, you have to, to, to have your first product uh, out there before it actually improves. So every year there are new things uh, improving. And uh, what we would like is that to have a, a, a product and a glasses which is not big, which is something which is similar to existing uh, glasses like like sunglasses, you know, that you could wear in the street and nobody would look at you bizarre, like because you have like gigantic things, super heavy with a battery and a wire. Okay, so where we would imagine that at some point we would have uh, this type of uh, small glasses where nobody you can wear it in the metro, you can wear it at work, you can wear it wherever you want and information are provided to your eyes uh, without nobody uh, seeing see, seeing that kind of thing and this moment is probably now uh, where we have now more and more um, glass suppliers who have this kind of small glasses one of the main one in china being unreal uh, but in uh, in the west in the us you have uh, magic leap uh, which are a bit smaller and we imagine that there will be a new version very soon uh, that that will make it uh, smaller so where this glass you still need to use the battery and the power of your phone so you plug it it's small okay so it has soon the size of a uh, of a real glasses but then you have a wire and you plug it to your phone to use uh, the, the processor of your phone and the battery of your phone to display all, all these things but i try it's super cool it's really it works really well you you have now wider field of view quite good quality of the image i think 4k per eyes if i remember well so so you can you can you know uh, uh, i try experience where you have a cat for a, a cat being built in in uh, by computers but that looks like a real cat and that goes around you because it the cat knows that you have a sofa you have a table you have something and 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 you can visualize and have the feeling that you have this object being around you imagine the number of application industrial application to help you uh, in a factory to give you instruction about how to use a machine uh, to uh, to to have information about a client your sales you know visualizing data in real time uh, Basically, we imagine that everything you are doing with your computer, with your phone, or with your television uh, could be displayed in that type of thing in a more uh, efficient way, in a more uh, interesting way, and provide more information than just having a flat screen that we have right now. Okay? So that's the idea. Yeah.
Yeah, talking about hardware, uh, we know that China is a place for hardware, is a place which produces uh, products and we have many factories. Um, JDI is not a surprise, if the leader in drones is Chinese with JDI. Um, what about your industry? Do you find some players which are uh, Chinese and are getting uh, momentum now? Uh, who are they? Uh, what do they do? Um, how, do you, how do you analyze the situation? Yes. So, uh, as I said, yeah, we're, we're our industry, AR, VR, is struggling because uh, because we have difficulties to to create an ecosystem for China because of the lack of content, uh, including the hardware. You cannot sell hardware if uh, you try to build a platform, and this was the case for many hardware maker. They try to, to you know, they, they build a hardware and then they find a platform which is like a store, but then the store has nothing. It's a bit the, the case right now with HTC. So HTC, uh, they are Taiwanese based, but but they they bet on the fact that China would be surrounded by a firewall, and they were right. So being like, oh okay, we can we can really focus on China because we are Taiwanese, so we can be more Chinese than Google and Facebook, and try to 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 get uh, to 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 really uh, get this market. But then uh, the. They, they, they did this this mistake, which is like, okay, we do super cool, recognize being super cool uh, headset. We build a platform called Viveport, which is the equivalent of a store. And uh, but out of that, there is almost no content, and we do not have any good strategy to try to bring developers and be like, and to to and to bring exclusive content and exclusive games to this platform to have users actually buying this headset and being like, oh, okay, we need to buy it because we have this content. They do, they do not think content. It's like, you know, right now, for example, you have um, Half-Life uh, uh, that has just been announced uh, that will be released on Steam, which is a super famous game that will be uh, free with the headset being built by Steam. That is something that drives real a number of users into a platform or into a headset. There is a real strategy. It's driven by the content. It's always driven by the content. Users are not interested into something that does nothing, even if the tech is amazing. If you cannot have a game or a film or something which is cool, it doesn't matter. And in China, we are not good at understanding that content is key to drive uh, user attraction. So who are the main player? I would say so uh, HTC used to try to be, but it's like not finding the right strategy out there. Should it be B2B? Should it be B2C? They are quite lost into what to do. They are always uh, too late in releasing the good product at the good time. It's like, uh, so they are very struggling. But then you have Pico, which is uh, Beijing based, uh, which look, um, P-I-C-O, Pico, uh, and uh, who, uh, they really emerge from that mess and succeed in having uh, uh, something, um, but they are not so much focused into a pure interactive experience and six degree of freedom experience, room scale, where you can move into the space. It's more 360 degree video headset. Uh, then you have in Shanghai, you have um, DPVR, okay, which uh, used to try to really compete directly with Oculus, but with become a quite small player now uh, and you have um, well, you still have uh, several people you have maybe um, what's the name you have Pimax uh, in Shanghai which is a quite cool startup where they did one of the most uh, uh, the highest resolution headset possible so it's an AK headset it's a big with a wide field of view and in Shanghai they, they, they build that kind of things they are specialized in doing super high resolution and they found their niche into that world um, for gamers and also for industrial application. So you have several players in hardware, and I would say they are the main one. You have some uh, players in platform. You have uh, uh, VR.TV, which is a, a platform of 360 degree video based in Beijing. Uh, also cool people who really try to make the, the ecosystem working. Um, but so so yes, but but you do not have the big component that Hollywood has and the American have, which is the content. And this is where Oculus is so good and Sony is so good as that they have the best uh, games, the best uh, content to watch. Uh, so this is why it's really thriving. And so the, the only way, yeah. Um, is also impacting um, the, the production in China, meaning that it's a bit contrarian because China is a factory of the world, is able to produce actually four 
others uh, in the world, but still you don't have uh, an, um, a brand which have been able to to produce worldwide from China. Not as it has happened with drones, for instance. Uh, that that's a bit contrarian to me, but the environment is explaining it. Uh, got it. Um, Last questions about uh, more yourself in China. Uh, what, do, what do you read uh, to stay up to date on China and new industry in China? Um, I read. Uh, I read actually a lot. Uh, I read. Uh, I read on, on the internet and everything. There is no not that much uh, literature about what we do. So of course I read first of all all the all the, the news from the US. So like TechCrunch, you know, like VentureBeat. Um, could be Forbes, you know, could be, uh, I, I don't think we have a, uh, there is one uh, website in China that I really like about the industry. It's called yivian.com. So it's like y y i v i a n.com. Uh, and it's a Chinese website, it's all in Chinese. So you have to use Google Translate, but I think, uh, they are really doing a great job about uh, informing uh, about what it is uh, and what's happening. But uh, yeah, it's about reading really all around. I mean, every day I, I spend, my, my as soon as I wake up, I spend uh, quite half an hour just in looking at what's happening in the industry, Twitter, and, and to see what, what people are, are saying about. Uh, I love also the blog of um, it's an old friend of mine, but uh, yes, let's 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 help everyone. I really like the, the blog of uh, Tony. Uh, my friend Tony is called the Scared Ghost. I will after send you. Maybe you can you can post it, which is a great blog where uh, he's giving great uh, tips and tricks. He's very more China focused, even if he's from Italy. So you have different type of of blogs and 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 key personalities to follow that would uh, really give you what are the trends of the industry. Yeah, but it's like, you know, it's so going all around so that that it's about technology, it's about creativity and it's about business. So you have to follow three different type of things and you have to follow the politics of China also to understand, okay, what's going to work in China, what is not going to work in China. And it's a, so it's like you have to be very holistic somehow. Yes. If you had the extra time, uh, what would you what would you build as a business? Uh, Maybe, uh, maybe other than VR and AR, but um, what, what, what would you be interested to do? Um, so I, I think for AR, uh, for, for the rest, I don't know, uh, but, but for AR, and VR, so right now we are doing a lot of uh, project by project things and helping uh, clients in marketing uh, and in building application for them. But uh, I think that there will be now a new generation, a new moment to start building different platforms for different uh, use, like platform for education, platform for travel. Doesn't make sense that there is no yet a sea trip in in VR. You know why, why not? There is there, there are quite a lot of millions of people having a headset where they could they could buy travel in VR. It barely exists. You know there is not some. So I, I think that there could be there is a lot of space for that for for AR also a lot of a platform for like uh, avatar. Uh, you know or like. A meeting, uh, meeting interface like Zoom that you are using right now. You know, this is typically something that could be built in VR or in AR, where you 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 have you are uh, you meet the avatar of your friends and you have yourself an avatar. It exists already, you know, but but it, but it could be uh, more and and could be pushed. It's really the time where we start building that because the 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 ecosystem. I mean, the number of users is big enough to 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 think about new new ideas like that. But outside of AR, of your, no, I, I wouldn't do something in blockchain or AI or in drones or qu quantum computers. Or this is not my specialty. My specialty is really content in uh, AR, VR. You have been in China for some time. What um, failure you have witnessed in China, uh, in the industry, in the society, in companies that you would not have expected uh, uh, before? Typical example is uh, WeChat payments that everyone is using uh, payment, basically the failure of a credit card now. Uh, people are not using their credit card anymore. So the success on WeChat, which is surprising payment and digital payment and the failure of credit cards could be an example. What, so success and failure you have witnessed in China, which were kind of contrarian and surprising to you? Biggest failure would be uh, my industry, 
so uh, AR and VR, uh, I think uh, was expected to be huge. And uh, because of a series of factors that we didn't really uh, analyze properly, uh, like I said, education, the porn industry driving things, you know, many of these things, we uh, were wrong about uh, the, the expect about what would be this market about, and we were wrong also. The 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 the, the government of China uh, uh, trying to incentivize the industry and helping and subsidizing many companies was also creating a huge mess in the industry where they uh, helped a lot of companies that were totally unqualified and that anyway that spent a lot of money uh, of the government and in the end bankrupt and create a huge distortion on the market so can you imagine for me for example we have we are not we are self-founded you know but when we go to see a client uh, a client uh, i've seen three other government founded companies that are doing a, a bit of crap work and uh, when we arrive to say oh, we have we have a cool product to show you we have some cool things they would say oh no we've seen three other things in vr we think vr is not great and it created a, a quite a huge distortion so a huge failure for for our industry uh, here uh, so so uh, but now picking up you know now now we have an understanding all the the these bad company bankrupt we only have a very few maybe maybe five percent of the initial company still being there but these one are the good one they have an understanding of what it is and 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 they are properly talking about the rvr and selling and evangelizing again in a proper way you know for real use case for real industrial application and not a buzzy word vr like we would use blockchain or ai right now you know uh, what would be the success? I think that uh, success in China has to be based on uh, a, a concept which is uh, driven by the density of the population or and or the uh, huge amount of people that we have in China, which is like typical consumer internet business like uh, Alibaba, you know, where uh, if you think about a great concept, which is based on the fact that we are a huge amount of people concentrated in a small uh, area like let's say Shanghai, it's a city of 25 million people concentrate there. If you have a, cost, a concept of uh, yeah of e-commerce, of delivery, uh, the delivery becomes so cheap uh, because uh, because a delivery guy can just go into within the same building and deliver to to several apartments. Where in my country, for example, in Brussels, uh, in Belgium, it would be totally uh, uh, unprofitable. So I, I think that every concept which is about that uh, is quite successful and it's, it's a, always a great idea. I would think like about like Mobike, you know, the shared bike, which is a bit less trendy now, but uh, I think it's a great idea and it works really well for, for big cities where for the price, you know, one bike can be shared amongst many people because it's a very dense place and it makes sense. It helps the place. So I'm a big fan of uh, Mobike and this type of very simple idea, but that really helps uh, in multiple uh, way uh, and deliver value a bit dif to different people in different way. I really like that. Thanks for your time. Uh, thanks for sharing. Um, I believe that it's um, going to be one of the words we're going to use more and more when 5G is going to arrive and be at scale. VR, AR, XR, all the words we have um, gone through uh, during this interview. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. And I hope everyone who is listening to us uh, learned things and enjoyed the talk. Uh, talk soon for a new episode. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.